Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? It is 2.42 p.m. <laughs> and my life is a mess today. Um, I have appointment after appointment after appointment today. <laughs> Was just talking to uh, my tax person on the phone, new tax person, um, and sitting waiting to get my hair cut. And uh, my hairstylist came out and she was like, I, you're gonna kill me. And I was like, what, I'm not gonna kill you. And she was like, your appointment's tomorrow at 2.15, not today. And I was like, oh my God, and I looked. And I always get like confirmation texts and stuff and I hadn't gotten one and I was like, I wondered why I didn't get a confirmation text. And I looked and I don't know how I messed it up, but I swore my appointment was today at 2.15 and it's tomorrow. And I was like, it's not your fault, it's my fault, you know? So, um, I was like, well, I'll see you tomorrow, it'll be fine. <laughs> she was so funny, I was like, well, let me pay your tip now, because I'll forget tomorrow, because I'm forgetting things left and right. And she was like, she was like, no, and I said, no. I said, I will surely pay you today for your services tomorrow. We got laughing so hard. I love, I've gone to my hairstylist forever and she's fantastic. Um, it is so hot. You guys, it is 58 degrees in Indianapolis today. It is sunny, it is beautiful. So that was the first thing, okay? Then um, I meant to get up early today to uh, film videos because I have all these appointments in the after, excuse me, in the afternoon. I'm gonna turn a little bit of air on in the car because, I'm oh, not max air, we don't need all that, but I have these appointments. I have my hair appointment and I have another appointment this afternoon and so I was like, well, I'm not gonna have time to film videos this afternoon, right? Slept in, didn't get up in time to film videos. Then I was like, okay, well, um, I wanted to review these new drinks at Starbucks, so, I stood there in the kitchen. <laughs> I put in my char, I took out the old battery and put in my, no, I had put it, took my battery out last night. I vlogged at like 4.55 in the morning. Woke up last night, I vlogged for like an hour and 10 minutes. Stood there, not even thinking, and went through and I always like, before I like leave to go, you know, film new videos or whatever, I delete the last video that I filmed with my memory card so that when I upload it, I don't have to upload all of that stuff again off my memory card. And I completely deleted <laughs> my, uh, what do you call it? My vlog from last night. An hour and 10 minute vlog I deleted. I just kind of sat there. Well, I don't, okay, I didn't even really realize it then. I got in my car and then I was like, okay, when am I gonna do this review? And then I was like, oh my God. I deleted my, because I hadn't started uploading my vlog yet. I was like, I deleted my vlog off of my memory card. I was like, oh my God. So, I obviously wasn't going to not film a vlog and put it up. <laughs> People were really nice. I tweeted it out and I said I just deleted my entire vlog from last night. People were like, you don't have to uh, film another vlog. I'm like, no, I'm gonna film another vlog. Um, but I am gonna go home right now and I'm gonna go get a, um, another battery and um, go to the bathroom and then come back out and finish vlogging and do my review video as well. And then I have an appointment at 20 after four. So at least I can get those two things done. I can't believe I did this. I was like, oh my God. So basically, <laughs> a waste of time. Oh well. Do you guys ever do that? Stuff like that would have like a, like a year ago, not a year ago, five, ten years ago. Got it? Not even probably five years ago. Probably ten years ago. Like it would have sent me over the edge. I would have been like, this day is over. Over. This is a waste of a day. I'm done. Blah 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 blah. blah whatever. But I don't get like that anymore. I'm just kind of like, you know, it is what it is, and uh, there's not anything I can do about it. So. You know, and life hands you lemons. And then I kind of think sometimes, well, maybe it was supposed to happen, you know? Did you ever think that was stuff? 
<laughs> no, not when you delete a vlog. It's an hour and ten minutes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway. I just remember too, because I was talking to my tax person on the phone, and she was going through like everything she's gonna need when we meet. I just realized I was like, going through my head on like all the bills that I have to pay like twice a year and stuff. And I'm like, did I forget to pay this? Did I forget to pay that? You know, now like I'm on, now because I'm forgetting stuff, I'm like on high alert, does that make sense? Not a cloud in the sky today. Not one cloud. <laughs> so yesterday I didn't film any videos on any of my channels. Um, got up, talked to a friend of mine. I have a friend of mine that's going through a really, really hard time right now talked to her for a long time on the phone and after that I just didn't feel like making any videos I just was kind of like I'm just kind of bummed out now and I don't really feel like it and um, I went and got coffee and then um, I had to pick up Tanya like early because which I actually ended up picking her up at the time that we always leave for the meeting but um, to go to our home group meeting last night because it was my sponsor's 25th sobriety birth date and so she was coming to our meeting because her home group meeting that she would usually get her token at um, is like they're only doing Zoom meetings right now because of COVID so they're not actually like meeting in person you know so she wanted to get her token in person. So she came to our meeting and then uh, somebody that she's been friends with for like 20 years gave her the token. It was nice, it was a great meeting last night and um, got to see a couple friends of mine, which was nice. And you know, I always do, <laughs> but that was nice and then afterwards I came home and Alex and I watched RuPaul's Drag Race. And then I laid down with Alex at like 11.30. And then I got up. Well, I got up, I don't remember what time I got up, honestly. It's all a blur now. But I got up and did all the bills for March. And then I, um, I'm trying to decide if I want to get my coffee now and do the review now, or if I want to wait and do it after. If I could, the thing is, I don't really have a lot of spots because I have, well, this is not filled, this is empty. So I can, oh, oh my Lord. I can put this back here and then I can put my water over here, and then I just have this cup. Um, so yeah, I did the bills, and then I went and vlogged last night, that's when I did the hour and 10 minute vlog, and then I listened to like, I was up, I couldn't go back to sleep, because I, it was like so, I can't, I don't think I left the house, I, it was like 4.55 or something when I was like vlogging, and so then I left the house, and um, after I got done vlogging, I really thought I was only gonna vlog for like a half an hour, but I was like wide awake. And so when I got done, I um, I listened to my audiobook for like a half an hour, maybe an hour. I didn't go to bed until like seven in the morning. 
just crazy. I was just talking to my neighbor before I left and he was like apologizing for how loud their dog barks. And I'm like, he was like, does it bother you? And I was like, I mean, his dog does bark loud, but I'm like, that's what dogs do. They bark, you know, like don't feel bad about it. He was like, are you sure? He was like, we're trying to train him not to bark. And I go, well, when you figure that out, will you let me know? I said, because Tucker barks so much. So funny, whenever I take them to the kennel, Tanya's always like, Tucker is literally the loudest barker of any dog that I have, which is so funny. I got this really nice email yesterday from David. I wanna give a little shout out to David. He sent me this really nice email. It was very long, and um, it was about how he and his wife have watched my vlog for like a really long time. And um, he's originally from Indianapolis, and like there were all these similarities between like the church that I went to and where we went to high school and where he lived. And he had a, had his 21st birthday at the VU, he said, which is so funny. Because I can remember my mom and her girlfriends going to dance at the VU, um, which is in Nora. It was like all these things. Anyway, it was just the nicest email. I mean, it just was like, hey, I just wanted to tell you, like, he doesn't live here anymore. He hasn't lived here since, like, 94. But he was like, I just wanted you to know, like, all the similarities I see in your videos. This is, like, really bad lighting to do a review video, and I can't do it here. But anyway, I don't know really where to go. Oh, it's because it's earlier in the day than how I usually do it. I usually do it at like four or something. See, it's a fine line between, this is right here is where I did that video where I poured ice on myself. All right, I'll be back you guys in, um, after I do my review. Okay, I'm back. I was like worried. <laughs> I was like, did I just delete my review and the beginning part of this vlog again? And now I'm like on hyper alert, you know? I was just listening to a little uh, holiday live by Madonna on my iTunes. And then I turned my iTunes off to put it on the radio and it's the cure. Let's go to bed. I love the cure so much. So I just reviewed this brown sugar drink. It's actually delicious. Um, but. I was thinking of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City because if you watch the reunion, Lisa kept on saying, roll footage, roll footage. And Whitney was like, we don't do that on this show. We don't roll footage. And I don't know why I thought that was so funny. She kept on saying, roll the footage, roll the footage. <laughs> and I was in line and I swear I ordered a venti. I, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But, um, my dad's partner used to live in this house right here, and it's fantastic. It's this, like, old farmhouse. But anyway, I don't know if you can even see that. It doesn't matter. But, um, so I was, like, sitting there, and I was like, did I order a, I swear, when they handed this to me, I was like, I think I ordered a venti. But I don't know if I did or not. Does it say on here? No, it says a grande. So, anyway. Oh, well. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit, as my mother-in-law always says. Oh, you know what I want to do? I want to go to the library. Oh, I should do that for a Peter Does Stuff video. I should go to the library. But maybe I'll do that tomorrow because I don't have my library card with me today. I keep it at home because it's too many things in my wallet. I'll do that tomorrow. I actually had thought about that the other night when I was like driving around vlogging because the library is right up here that I went to as a kid. And I passed it. And I was like, did I even, maybe I said it on the vlog, I don't know. I was gonna go home and go to the bathroom, but I think I'm just gonna try to vlog for another 30 minutes and then just go home and upload the vlog. Um, and my review video before my appointment and then leave for my appointment like at like five till four that should give me enough time to get there but anyway um what was I saying yeah my library is like right up here that I used to go to when I was a kid and so I thought oh that would be a good video to do on my Peter Does Stuff channel the show the library that I used to go to as a kid 
Do you remember when you would go to the library and they would have those, like the cards that they would like check out and stamp? Oh my God, I wanted one of those librarian cards so bad that you like, you know, you go I wanted one of those so bad. Or before then, when the librarians would just stamp it. They would stamp your library books. And some of the librarians would open all your books and then just go through and stamp it close, stamp it close, stamp it close, stamp it. Do you remember that? I wanted to be a librarian so bad. Yep, here it is right here. Here's my library that I used to go to as a kid. I don't know, maybe I won't do that tomorrow. Maybe I'll do it sometime this week, we'll see. Turn this world around. I've been listening to the strangest music lately, like all over the place. I honestly am still kind of like mesmerized by the fact that I deleted my vlog, but oh well. Oh well. I'm listening to this detective book and it's called, I don't know what it's called honestly. But it's by Ian Smith, I think. It's actually really good. If you just like, I'm trying to think of who, oh, look at their little sunroom over there. It's like octagonal glass, it's very cute. I'm trying to think of who it reminds me of. It reminds me of, it reminds me of all the detective books that my uncle used to read back in the day. You know, it's like one, one guy writes like 50 books and it's all the same detective. Kind of like in a weird way, kind of like Alex Delaware from the James Patterson books. Is that his name? Alex Delaware? I can't even remember. But anyway, kind of like that, where it's like the same detective over and over and over again. Who did my uncle used to read that was like that? But it kind of gives me those kind of vibes. Um, I mean, it's not like a super deep, um, like mystery or anything like that. It's literally, um, like this missing rich girl from like Hyde Park in Chicago and her dad's like one of the richest guys in Chicago and they hire this private investigator that used to be part of the police force and um, he retired and I mean it's more than that the, the main character that's the private investigator like it like well I will say this the writer's really good at developing characters because like he writes like kind of deep characters for like a book that's not super deep it kind of reminds me of um I was gonna say Jonathan Kellerman but I don't think I've read a Jonathan Kellerman book all the way through you know what's so funny is like a year ago um I wanted to start reading a series I think this was before I got into the cozy mysteries and I bought the very first I think it's called like When the Bow Breaks or something. Jonathan Kellerman series, book in that series. I had read, I had started reading like years ago, like the third one, second or third one in the series. So I was like, I'll read those because people were recommending them to me. I think it's about a psychiatrist or something. His wife writes Faye, Faye Kellerman. Is that Jonathan Kellerman's wife? I think she writes books like mysteries too. But anyway... God, can you imagine if you were a husband and wife and you wrote mysteries like both of you? That would be such a cool life, wouldn't it? <sighs> I don't know. I think part of like being in a marriage or being in a long-term relationship too is being with somebody that has a lot of different interests than you and you can share those things with each other. Like Alex and I have so many things that are in common, but we have a lot of things that are different too. Like my ex and I, I mean, it was like, we were like, dude, dude. I mean, everything was like, you know, do, 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 like what I liked, he liked kind of thing. And I wouldn't say that it made for a boring relationship, but I, I would say that it became stagnant after a while, you know? I mean, even if it's just Alex, like he, watched, he and I watched completely different kinds of TikToks. So we'll send each other TikToks, you know? Or like he plays that game constantly, <laughs> Township, and I don't. I read, he doesn't, you know? It's like, but it's almost kind of like the differences in our relationship um, make our relationship more interesting to some degree, you know? I think that what's important is that our basic philosophies about life and our belief systems 
are on the same page. Well, it's not necessarily true, I guess. Um, I would say our long-term goals and our basic philosophies of like how to treat people, you know, being kind, being compassionate towards the world, things like that, um, are pretty similar. I like spiritually, you know, my husband's an atheist, and I'm. Um, oh my god, it says Starbucks is now open. The new Starbucks is so. Look at this new Starbucks, isn't it so pretty? Um, but my husband's an atheist, and I'm not, which I've shared on here quite a bit. So, um, but that doesn't seem to ever like cause any problems, like. It's never caused a problem, ever, in our relationship. Um, he's just so respectful of, like, me saying, well, like, that, that's a God moment or, you know, whatever. Um, or spiritually believing in the depth of something. And I am equally as respectful of his what it is for him as well and why it is for him you know because there is a why for him it's not just he was like there's not a god for it. I mean there is a reason you know and um why he feels that way and and I think that the other thing that is allowed is that even though my husband has a lack of spiritual belief in his life I still feel like he's on a spiritual journey and I don't know how to explain it any better than that except for that I think that like I mean I'm very much a believer that our souls are of our spirit um, I need to turn around is what I need to do so that I can get back to my house in time to upload this and but I'm very much a believer that like our spirits you know are of our soul you know and that it's about know how to say what I'm trying to say. Uh, just because he doesn't believe in a higher power doesn't mean that he's not, um, like a person of the soul. Like, you know, that his soul doesn't speak to him and that he doesn't have spirit within him. You know, I don't think that you have to be, um, necessarily a religious person to have spirit. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. So I think you can still be a spiritual person. You just don't believe in a higher power and you don't, um, believe in a, you know, all that, which I think is to each his own. I think if I was a religious person and not just in recovery where we're, you know, allowed to believe in, you know, God concept of our own, I think I would probably feel differently about that. <clears throat> and I know a lot of couples that have really struggled, like where not just one is a believer and one is not, but where there's two different religious beliefs um, within one couple. I actually knew somebody that one was Mormon and the other one was Jehovah's Witness. And I remember for like Christmas parties and stuff, like work Chris, holiday Christmas parties, like the wife would come, but she was Jehovah's Witness. She would come Oh, no, 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 no. Baptist and Jehovah's Witness. She would come, but she would come, like, after the gifts had been given, after, like, the Christmas celebration had been done, um, for just, like, the gathering part of it, so to speak. And, you know, they make it work, and, um, but I've known a lot of couples that it's, like, not even, like, that's kind of, like, you know, severe case. I know couples that are, like, I'm just throwing out an example, but like, you know, Catholic and, uh, you know, like practicing Catholic and like non-practicing like Protestant, right? And it's like, <clears throat> or Lutheran or something, let's just say Methodist. And uh, like, that's a huge issue. Like, cause you know, like maybe like the wife wants to go to church like every Sunday and raise the kids in the church, going to mass and things like that. And the husband's like, I'm not gonna go to church. Like it's not important to me. And um, like, I've known quite a few couples like that. I think it's hard, you know? I think those are things you don't think about until you're getting married. And then it's like, it's not just about getting married. It's about how are you gonna like raise your kids? Are you gonna raise your kids in a religious environment? Are you not going to work races in a in a religious environment. Like, I know for my parents, it was really important for them that I was raised in a church, you know, and that we went to church every Sunday and that I had Sunday school. Like, those were important things to my parents. Um, 
that they didn't take lightly. Like, those were decisions that they thought through, you know, and that they wanted to make sure that... I think for them, it was... <clears throat> You know, it's interesting my mom's, like, spiritual journey, I think, because she, if I remember correctly the way that it happened, like, my grandma didn't go to church when um, they were growing up. And my mom started going to an Episcopalian church, which is actually, they got married in an Episcopalian church here in town. My mom used to always say that, that St. Paul's Episcopal is where they got married. My mom used to always say... Um, like, she took pride in the fact that that was the first church that um, did gay marriages here in town. They were also, like, one of the first churches that had a, a woman pastor, which my mom loved. But, um, so she started going to an Episcopalian church. You guys, the, the songs they play on this, Channel 33, First Rave, Rock... It's all the songs I listened to in high school. The church, or church, under the Milky Way. Do you remember that song? Um, and it's so funny, too, because when I was in high school, I thought these songs were, like, so edgy and stuff. And now I listen back to them, I'm like, they're really not that edgy. But, um, and then when she, my mom married my dad, she converted to being a Lutheran. Like, that was very, very important to her. And, um, that she was a Lutheran, like my dad was. Um, and I, actually, I think she did that before they got married. Because if she was going to get married in a, uh, if she was going to be married to a Lutheran, she wanted to be Lutheran. Um, <clears throat> it's so funny the things I see during the day that I don't see at night, like, uh, in these neighborhoods. But anyway, um, yeah, I think they thought, like, <clears throat> if I grew up going to a church on a regular basis, then that would be like a foundation for having morals, principles, you know, and things like that. Um, which I, I totally understand that. You know, I totally understand that that's where um, parents, why parents want their kids raised in a church. I think also like my parents really thought it through. They wanted me to go to a church that was not just in a certain neighborhood or would have a certain kind of class, you know, or whatever. Like, they wanted me to go to a really diverse church. And, um, like, my mom always said that. Like, years and years and years, I mean, I think the discussion of diversity is interesting because in, like, especially on, like, BookTube, like, in the last, like, since I've been on BookTube, diversity has always been an issue, right? But I don't remember the issue of, like, people talking about diversity in movies and books and things like that. I mean, it's always been an issue, right? Like, in a college course room or, like, in a, you know, a political discussion and things like that. But I don't remember the discussion of diversity being such an issue like it is today, which I think is an important discussion to have, right, of diversity and inclusion. I think they're really, really in, important conversations to have. But it's interesting to me that that was something that my parents thought about, you know, when I was growing up. Um, diversity on all kinds of levels, you know, not just the main ones that we think about, you know, but. So, you know, it's interesting when I look back on that, that that was really important to my parents. And I'm glad it was, you know. It's interesting because I didn't really have any bad experiences with church ever. Um, I don't remember looking back. I mean, I was, we were involved with our church. Like, I mean, I went to Sunday school every Sunday. I was an acolyte. You know, I was confirmed in the church and things like that. And I don't remember, excuse me. It's interesting because this guy that wrote me, David, he talked about the pastor of that church and it was like I remember um, like my mom really really respected that guy like that name was known in our house his name was Pastor Huxold and um, I can see him in my eyes like I can see him and he was just such a kind man 
I remember the sermons being very like what what I remember or understood of being very like current event kind of sermons. <clears throat> Like, whatever was going on in the world that week, and then applying it to be, like, a better Christian, so to speak. Um, the Sunday school stuff was, you know, <laughs> worksheets that just, you know, had a boat, and it was about Noah. I mean, it was really no deeper than that. I don't remember Sunday school being real deep, you know. I do remember the church smelling very old. <coughs> But I don't remember having any, like, I don't look back on my experiences going to church. Which for me, this is really where the divide is in between, um, like, who is God, where is God, and religion, church, and spirituality. Because for me, it's like, I never found that in a church, you know? Um, I don't remember looking back and feeling any kind of internalization of any kind of spiritual belief or feeling from going to church. Um, I don't remember leaving church and feeling the way that I feel when I leave a meeting. Of course, I'm much older today. I don't remember looking back and feeling like, like my mom, she would say to me later, like her, she loved like hymns on Sunday. And she would say like, like, my mom, I think this is probably where I get my love of going, you know, or of, of Sundays. My mom loves Sundays as, like, a start to, it's so weird, I just looked over and this woman has, like, a coat on that my mom used to, it's, like, pink and gray, and my mom used to have this pink and gray coat like that, it's so weird. Um, but my mom always talked about how she loved Sundays, and, you know, it would start with church, and when I was older... And I didn't go to church with her. She did altar service, which is where you get communion ready and then you take it down. And so she was always the last one to leave the church. Um, and, you know, she was very, and I, she did that when I was a kid too. She was very involved in the church. She did this kids cafe thing and whatever. But like, I can remember my mom always saying like, especially as I got older, she would say, I feel like very spiritual from just the hymns on Sundays. And I love just listening to the hymns and, um, you know, and, and then I leave there and she was like, I feel so, I feel so full of God, you know, and, and then I feel ready to start my week. Like, I don't remember getting that. And like I said, I've said this before, like, you know, kids that I would go to high school with and stuff, they would say things, the religious things. And I just, like, I thought they were such frauds and phonies because I was like, I don't, how are they internalizing this on a level like this? Like, I don't understand. Like, I don't have that, you know? Like, where are they getting that from? They must be faking it. And that's really what I always thought, you know? And I think that my recovery to some degree, there's been specific incidents, but my recovery was a spiritual awakening or experience of its own. And I think that, you know, I, had I never gotten sober, I don't think I would feel the way that I feel today. Um, I think that was my way through, um, if that makes sense, to the sunlight of the spirit. And, um, I don't know, because I didn't internalize it, you know? I just didn't. I felt like I had had spiritual moments. I could tell you that I could drive down the street in the middle of sun, summer, a summer night with the windows all open, the sunroof open, you know, blasting Mr. Tambourine Man by Bob Dylan. And that was a spiritual experience for me. And today it still is, you know, or a live set from the Grateful Dead. But I didn't, but I, did, I couldn't put a, a word or a name to it. And maybe I don't need to, and maybe we don't need to, you know, I don't know. How did I get talking about this? <laughs> I don't, oh, I don't know. How did I get talking about this? <laughs> oh man. Well, listen, you guys, I, this is gonna be a short vlog today. I was gonna try to make it to 40 minutes, but I'm getting close to being home, and then I need to rush in and upload this and then change. So, um, let's just change my shirt, actually. So, I'm going to um, go to the bathroom. I am going to stop here, and tonight I will um, do a longer vlog, you know. Oh, my God, I can't believe I deleted my vlog, but oh, well. It is what it is. 
and it's still a wonderful day. It is 60 degrees outside now. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. I'm going to blast some music and drive along and, and have a little spirituality in my life with some music. I have a little spiritual experience. I love to just drive and blast my music, do you? Anyway, all right, you guys. I'm going to get off here now. I love you so much. And uh, <clears throat> and I will see you. Uh, I know, almost choked, choked on that. Uh, on the I love yous. I almost choked on the love yous. If nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And um, I hope you're having an amazing Wednesday. And I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya!